We got us a, what I think is gonna be pretty typical package unit here. Let's go take a look. I've never liked this unit because I think it's a snap together kind of chintzy thing made out of plastic. Everything strips out, screws don't work very well, and you can't really check the charge without propping this door on. This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools. Quality tools, essential support. What's going on guys? So we're gonna get started here on this job. Got a new toy, got two new toys. Got thermal imager here we're gonna be doing a few calls with here. Maybe we'll check it out here today. It's supposed to be pretty, it's been pretty cool so far. And that finally got me a posi lock. This thing here is for pulling those hubs that I can't get sometimes. This thing is wicked. Looking forward to using this thing. They are expensive, but they're made in America. So it gives you two different monster hubs here. And you can see how big that sucker is. And then the, the locking mechanism goes down onto this cage deal here. So yeah, made in America, assembled in America anyhow. This here tightens up the cage and you can pull it. So anyhow, we got us a, what I think is gonna be pretty typical package unit here. Let's go take a look. Um, it's, had a tendency to freeze up and uh, it's got a little bit of history. It's always a really good sign when you walk up on it and it has our 22 bottle laying there, which has refrigerant in it. So what we've got going on here, it's dirty, hasn't been cleaned out from what I can gather. I mean, it you can see some light through the coil back here, but he had it freeze up and then uh, turned it off and then turned it back on so it could freeze up again. Missing a trap there, so we're draining out on different areas. Disconnect box left open, so let's get it open and see what we got. We got here, so we got one that keeps freezing up. That don't look good. And it feels like it's fine, if not overcharged. So why is it freezing up? Let's get a look at that evaporator, see if it's dirty. I went ahead and took the side off here. Evaporator don't look too horrible. I'm gonna wash it out. I don't get too worried about it when uh, when it's outside here. It just drains on the ground and through the bottom of it. Gonna need to put this cover on. It's kind of a bad design. If you just try to wash it out with that off, you're gonna get it all in that control board. The uh, burners and stuff there need cleaned out and blown out. May blow that out here in a little bit. That should make it a little easier to get in there to that. We was able to run the garden hose up through that window. Now that could look clean, but not be clean. So we may have to yank the blower. We'll see if we can get through it with the uh, hose there. Most of it's all coming out through the drain. If we got good suction pressure, we'll know that we aren't restricted too badly. Mainly comes down to just basic maintenance as usual. I think it's gonna be an airflow issue. The return air is on this side of the building, which is one little business, and he's got the thermostat, is on the other side. And this guy on this side here with most supply registers has no return air. So it's not the greatest design. The thermostat, like I said, can be get turned down kind of low at night and freeze up. So it's kind of a, a little bit of a mess the way it is. Okay, we got that done. No water got into the board, which is good. That back washed out through here. Make sure there's no crap caught in the middle of the coil, you never know. We'll look at the other side and see if a bunch of black crap come out. If it did, then we know we need to pull that blower and get in there really big time. Yeah, I do not see anything on this side of the coil, so I'd say we're probably good there. Let's go ahead and get this thing back together and check refrigerant charge. I have a feeling that we're probably not gonna find anything because the mixture between airflow issue and running it too cold. This is going to be done by superheat because there's no TXV. So we've got everything probed up. I've never liked this unit because I think it's a snap together kind of chintzy thing made out of plastic. Everything strips out. Screws don't work very well. 
and you can't really check the charge without propping this door on so we're gonna try to get that on there usually just run a screw into that cross member there going vertical that'll hold the door on good enough for while we're doing our tests it keeps the return air pulling through the evaporator so right now we're running a 36 degree evaporator it just came on so obviously we can't get too crazy superheat's already eight and diving it's probably overcharged being our sub cooling is 28 degrees 97 degree liquid temperature outdoor temperature i'm going to guesstimate probably seven areas so about to check that yet chances are this was charged by the hand brake method or beer can cold in other words yep down to two two degrees there what it was they probably did that to push the uh suction temperature up saturated suction temperature to above freezing would not surprise me but it's overcharged now we're up to 30 and don't forget where condenser coil is still wet it's uh it's going to change even more as it runs also it's a so-called commercial application but no fan cycle switch on it either we're going to go ahead and check our superheat here so i've got the probes on I drilled a hole now i've got to poke a hole through the insulation because they did insulate it oh they got two boxes there that's really convenient for the service guy ain't it so they just got a fake box on the outside let's go ahead and drill a hole through the door i'll tell you this much if you're going to complain about me drilling a hole through that it's a whole lot worse on that compressor being flooded back like it's doing right now we got a 41.9 degree evaporator versus a 41.5 saturated temperature we're actually coming back liquid that's a whole lot worse than putting a stupid hole in the door so before you leave a comment about it i'll put a piece of tape or a piece of uh, silicone whatever not a big deal so let's go ahead and get us a supply temp also which probably pretty sure we can go on this side of the door here we could go inside might be able to actually yeah i'm not sure how this is this is kind of a interesting design here there we go yep so they got insulated duct trunk there and they just wrapped this around it to hide it maybe a flex duct even i don't know supply must go right into the inside so we got our probe set up got the return there we got our outdoor temperature here since we're doing superheat on this particular one we're actually using the 605 eyes sometimes depending on what it is you're doing if you're doing temperature eyes you have to use the 915 which is capable of doing just regular old temperature only so what we did is we came into our settings and we picked a smart probe or manual input so you can do either or so it's 77 degrees according to that right there which within a degree or two what it actually was the return come in 62 which is kind of surprising so what we did is we told the gauges that i wanted to do superheat superheat target is 14 degrees we literally can have this thing charge itself if it was low i can put my wireless uh, solenoid on there and actually charge it so what we're going to do is re recover some of this into a tank and uh, like right now it shows right here that we have 0.1 superheat but we do know that we need a 14 degree superheat so we can escape back out of here that was charging by superheat we got charging by subcooling then you got recovery so we're back to regular old refrigerant charge we know that we are overcharged subcooling there is 26 which we can write down so we remember and we had pretty much zero on superheat so let's go ahead and get this blown into a container and see where we're coming now we're getting closer there outdoor temperature here like i was saying earlier now is outdoor dry bulb temperature 76.6 i've got 75 so we're within a degree degree and a half our return bulb temperature 62 wet bulb and calculated superheat is 15 degrees now we can see our pressures over here this is kind of a clone of the gauge and you can see your subcooling superheat everything's on the app here but it clones it so you got to do your changes here and it shows up over here and you do get more more to see with the phone app target is 15 we're at 13 so we're right in there this is very sensitive i took just a little bit out had to add just a touch more in i'm talking probably not even six ounces eight ounces it's very minuscule 
so it's, it's it was easy for whoever to overcharge it yeah this kind of show off what it can do here your weight scale part process here target max capacity you can set exactly how much the max that way if it doesn't make a mistake it won't overdo it so right now we're at nine ten fluctuating down to six i hate superheat that's why i prefer everything to be self cooling and with a txv but we're making it do we are doing it off the discharge which you're supposed to do off the liquid line as you already know but liquid line is probably hidden somewhere back in there it's got a crap bristol compressor in there we know that they aren't reliable surprisingly it's still running and this is a can't tell the date's too far gone as far as discharge temperature what we're getting out of it we've got our other sensor down there you can see up here that we have four bluetooths connected plus a phone all my testo stuff can be had at true tech tools promo code survival for eight percent off if you guys are interested in any of that stuff check out true tech tools links for the stuff are down in the description down below enter survival save yourself eight percent off your total order from what i hear there's some exclusions but that just depends on tool manufacturer it's nothing that true tech tools has going on it's just manufacturer preferences on some things at least we're not flooding back we're at seven degrees and it's coming back up i don't get too excited right now with the way that one is so we got 53 degree discharge i think we have 60 something coming back this is where it gets a little wonky trying to do things that's coming back awful warm if that's the case. Let's stick the regular old thermometer in there and see if we've got an issue going on here. May have found our issue while it's freezing up. Yeah, we're coming back 74 degrees. Maybe it's finally reading ac accurately now. Okay, so maybe it was. I was, I was probably, oh, you know what it was. I was looking at wet bulb. Can you believe that? I made a mistake. Holy crap. So we are looking at true temperature. So there's the 117. So we got 53 out. It can probably do the, the subtraction for you, but I don't use this very often. I'm doing mainly refrigeration anymore. So there's 338. So I don't really need it that often. So it's just kind of neat to show it off for the people that might be interested in it. So 74. 53 minus 6, 74. Let's just say it's 73. So 63, 73. That's 20, 21 degree uh, rise there. So we got a good rise. We're not coming back too uh, cold. We're going out at a moderate, decent rate there on that. We're running right in there at 13.2 on the superheat. It's fluctuating some. Like I said, that's why I hate about superheat. So we're good on that. I'm gonna go ahead and compare this top down, top dawn, I guess. Go ahead and turn it on, hit the power button. Go hit the HIK micro, hit the power button on it. There's HK micro coming on, top on. Now you can see it's a bigger screen, but it's not really the effective measuring screen that's bigger. This is Android driven. As you can see, boom, instantly HK micro is immediately ready to go. And we've got it pointing out our hottest and our coldest spot which this can do live video recording. Can't really, I don't want to bother with trying to transfer this stuff. That just sucks. Glare is a freaking issue. There we go. Man, that just sucks. So I'm not recording with that. So going into the top dawn, I really don't like seeing myself in the picture, so go into there you can see it's window driven hit thermal imager this thing can do regular pictures all kinds of different stuff got a little bit of a splash screen there and you can see that same freaking reflection it's just i mean it's 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 a nice unit you can see that it's uh picking up quite a bit of heat and what's going on there it's not quite the resolution that the from a long distance away, it's not got quite the resolution that the other one's got, but it's a little cheaper. You can see the heat on the compressor there. I mean, it's it's got some range. The resolution's pretty much the same according to the spec sheet. So when you compare the size of the screen, it technically is about the same, maybe just a little bit off. Coming back to here, you, it's finer detail on the, yeah, the HIK Micro. So you can see the same things with it. I hate the fact it's getting me in that, that glare. There's just no good way to do it without covering things up and then recording it. It's kind of difficult to hold them both. 
You can see the outline a little better. This one here, I think, has that. It's definitely more vibrant, but I had the, the color turned down on the H, uh, H, uh, HK Micro. Both showing 158, 149. Going to the center there, center is 95. Go to the center there, 94.95.9. So they're both accurate as far as in the center pointer. I don't know, just something I thought I'd show you guys. I have links for it down below, but both of them. This one here can be had on True Tech Tools. That one there is an Amazon link. Depending on what the price is, because I know the HIK, the HIK Micro has gone up in cost. It used to be like $5.99. Uh, I got rid of the FLIR. I sold that fairly cheap. That thing has gone up to over $700, uh, just because I, will, I already have two of these now. I think we're good to go. We got 13 degrees there. We've got that siliconed up and we've got that siliconed up so we're good to go everything's put back together uh we're gonna i recommended that we add a fan cycle control to it he said if it freezes up again he'll do that i said alternatively we can also put a thermostat in the evaporator coil or on the suction line to shut it down so if it gets too uh, cold and freezes up it can shut down but it'd make more sense to have the fan cycle control that way it should be able to cycle the fan preventing it from freezing up which would then uh, actually keep it running. Uh, they are doing things in there when it's probably moderate temperatures out. So they are asking more of it. And so it's, uh, it definitely would benefit from it. Not my gas, don't know where it came from. Chances are somebody probably got it for him. And you can tell how full that is off of the line right there. So it's a third full. I'm gonna give him a cap and tell him exactly that he's probably got about eight pounds in there and that he should probably put it inside. That's gonna wrap this one up, guys. Haven't had a whole lot going on. Stuff I've been doing is just off the wall stuff that uh, either the video is gonna be too long or just may not be all that interesting to people. But like I was saying, guys, these videos, I do them because you guys watch them. So I do wanna say thank you so much. I'm finally in the 30, 30 some thousand subscribers range, which, not everybody's watching all of those videos, so obviously I'd be getting 30,000 on every video. If you would click notification bell, that way you're actually notified that I've released them. So if you do enjoy them, you'll at least know that I've got one going on. Honestly, thank you so much everybody that has been watching, that leaves comments down below. The people that leave the comments are the only reason why I'm still doing this. I make money at it, but honestly, the real reward I get is when I hear that it has helped somebody that was struggling or just people enjoy watching them because it takes a lot of time. I mean, I'll have four or five hours in these videos, editing them down. By the time you get them uploaded, stuff like that. Yeah, you can do it on your phone, things like that, but you just don't have quite the same quality level. And I wanna make sure I cut all the dead spots and things like that out of it that just makes it boring. I hate videos that drag on. I try to make them quick as possible, straight to the point. That's why when people miss things that I put in there and say, I didn't do some particular thing. I know for a fact that they end up skipping ahead and, and just hit the fast forward button, which, or that to the left button. And uh, you can skip five, 10, 15, 20 seconds at a time. So anyhow, guys, I appreciate y'all watching. I appreciate you subscribing. And until next time, we'll catch you on the next one. Later.